Hey there, welcome to CNT Collectibles MC. Hope you're doing well. All right, as the all-star break. And although there's a few things that are uh, entertaining during the break, it's a good time just to kind of uh, catch up on, on baseball a bit here. See, uh, see who's been doing well, who's not. Look under the hood a bit and see why that may be the case um Juan Soto he seems fixed huh <laughs> so um but maybe if he just you know limits all his bats to like a minute or something like that if the pitchers cooperate then he'll start hitting a ton of bombs so oh, again it's the annual there's nothing wrong with Juan Soto rant here but today we're looking at pitchers and we'll take a look under the hood and see who's been uh, having a f good first half, who may be not up to par, and, and why that is the case. So I picked out a few players that have uh, perhaps overperformed or underperformed, and uh, we're going to dig in a bit and see uh, see what their second half prospects might hold. So uh, with this, with any sort of regression, if you're looking at batting average and balls in play or fielding independent pitching or any of those metrics, players can roll with those extremes for an entire season is typically the next season that uh that you'll see uh you know things really revert to the mean so uh in season guys can get hot and stay hot or they can slump and they can continue to slump so uh these are some potentials uh that, that could uh, reverse themselves a little bit here but for the most part it is uh it's no guarantee and we're just gonna have some fun with it um, for the few days that uh there isn't a whole lot going on here so some of the terms that we're going to use today ERA, earned run average, I think most of you are familiar with that. Fielding independent pitching or pitching or FIP, and there's an estimate of a pitcher's run prevention ability independent of their defense. <clears throat> so, uh, strip out everything that, uh, that they, uh, that, that's not in play basically. So home run, hit by pitch, strikeout, walks defense and then uh, the FIP will give you kind of an average of balls that are in play and, and what would that outcome look like and so you can kind of get a sense of you know where pitchers getting lucky or unlucky based on that and then XFIP it's the same as FIP but normalizes the home run rate to a league average so uh, there's some players that are very good at not giving up home runs and there's some players that give up a little, a little too many home runs and so it'll normalize that FIP to a league average. And we'll explain that a little bit as we get into it here. So a uh, few players that are getting a bit unlucky, perhaps, and uh, perhaps their, uh, their their prospects will change in the second half here. So Tariq Skubal has a 411 ERA, and he's pitching at a 302 FIP level. So the difference between the ERA and that FIP is nearly a run. So there's a big difference right here, here. And I've I've really just gone with kind of some of the some of the bigger names. There's a few uh, there's a few names that uh, they, they 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 have a, a little wider spread between that ERA and that FIP. But no one really cares for the most part. So these are some of the more interesting names. I'm trying to sort it out by near elite or, or elite pitchers here. So I look at I do that with the, the strikeout to base on balls above 20, very good to elite above 30. You're looking at Cy Young type guys. So if you're close to that or over, then we'll look at you today here. So his XFIP is a 328. So although there's a big difference between the ERA and the FIP, if you normalize the home run rate just a little bit, it's not too wild off. But Again, we can expect some improvement out of Tariq Skubal in the second half. He's giving up a kind of a league average home run per nine. That 0 .8, 0 0.85 is is really what you're looking for, and that'll come into play in some players that we look at down the road here. Again, borderline uh, uh, elite stuff here in that strikeout to, to walk right here. And this is where we expect to see some of the regression come from, the batting average on balls in play. So hitters have it. If you have a, a very low batting average on balls in play like a Juan Soto, you would you would say, you know, you know everything else being equal, you're getting unlucky. You know, more of those balls that you hit should be finding grass. You know, Soto's getting shifted for the most part. He, he can beat that shift. He's able to put the ball to all fields. Perhaps in the second half that, that, uh, average, that average improves as his batting average on balls in play rises. At the same time, you have guys that maybe have a four or five hundred batting average of ball in play and say, you know what, half the balls that you hit are finding the grass. That's a little lucky, and we'd expect some regression the other way. So it's the same thing with pitchers. You get above that 300 level, and it's like, all right, too many balls that are being hit are finding their way to uh, to safety here. We'd expect that to normalize a little bit. So he's getting unlucky in that area here. And left on base percentage kind of adds into that uh, unlucky ERA or that higher ERA relative to how he's pitching under the surface. So 65% uh, of the people that get on base stay there. The league average is probably closer to about 80%. Um, so as the left on base percentage normalizes, should it normalize, then more guys will be stranded on base in that uh, ERA won't take as big a hit. So uh, one of the positive regression candidates we are looking for is, because of all that, Tariq Skubal. All right, next, Kevin Gossman. Uh, 2.87 ERA, and he's pitching at a fielding independent pitching of 1.85. He is an elite-level pitcher. <laughs> so um, 
to see that, uh, you know, gosh, you know, sub three RA, not good enough. You should be pitching better. You're getting unlucky. Perhaps, but there's a few things here that say, you know what, you're probably right in line with what you're doing, which is, which is really, really good. So no shame in, uh, not regressing at all either here. So fielding independent pitching 1.85, there's a difference here of, uh, 1.03. So again, room for improvement potentially, but, the XFIP is about a 2.86, which is right in line with his current ERA. And the reason for that is he doesn't give up very many home runs at all. If that, uh, if that home run rate normalizes more towards a league average the back half of the season, then you would, then you could, uh, you could assume that that, uh, that, that FIP and that ERA would, uh, would rise just a little bit here. So, uh, XFIP to ERA, again, pretty sim, pretty solid because we're assuming that the home run rate maybe rises a little bit, doesn't quite sustain that, uh, that pace for the back half of the season. Again, elite level stuff here. The BABIP, unlucky. So this is where the FIP comes down. All right. This is where we see ERA 287, but the fielding independent pitching quite a bit lower than that. Um, three, three hitters as, as they put a ball into play are batting three points 373 against them that's extremely unlucky all right so left on base percent again a little bit unlucky here so while we could look at those two numbers and say all right gosh he could be even better in the second half and that certainly could be the case if he gives up a couple more long balls then he's probably right where he's at so now maybe this is a skill for him so if he's able to keep that home run to fly ball home run for nine uh in that lowish area you know the 0.5 or below or then we could see some regression in the era but all things considered here, Kevin Gossman, pitching, pitching very, very well. <laughs> um, I don't think it gets a whole lot worse for him. He should be able to maintain this, if not improve, just a bit going forward. All right. Next up, Carlos Rodon getting a bit unlucky, and he's having a terrific season here. So, again, what uh, what what kind of improvement are we looking for? Uh, not not a ton or anything like that, but this is an elite-level pitcher that uh, that's not getting lucky. He uh, He's getting a little bit unlucky and can probably continue to doing what he's doing uh, for the back half of the season. He's got 266 ERAs. Fielding independent pitching is 2.14 for a .52 differential between that ERA and the fielding in, independent pitching. The XFIP has him going a little bit higher. Again, that home run to fly a home run per nine pretty low uh we would be looking for something like 0 0.8 0 0.85 as the league average and so there's some upside potential if he's starting to give up more home runs but historically is that the kind of pitcher that he is and so if uh if he does regress to that league normal then you would expect that uh, ERA to rise more towards his XFIP. If he's able to maintain that rate, then we think that the ERA would go more towards down the fielding independent pitching here. So elite level stuff here and walks to walks to base on balls. Um, 307 batting average on balls in play. Again, that's where the the FIP has a little room to go to the little room to go to the south here and left on base as well. You're right in that league average. Not a whole lot of uh, differential there going forward. So if he's able to avoid the uh, avoid the long ball, then Carlos Rodon could continue to improve in the second half here. All right. Looking at a few players that may be getting a little bit lucky, and let's just admire the stats for a second here. So Justin Verlander, 189 ERA. His FIP, fielding independent pitching, is 308 for the season for our, over a one-run differential between the two. All right. So this, this is where the guys are getting a little bit fortunate, but... You know, with Verlander, he does this every year. It's a skill set for him. So, uh, XFIP 333. So, um, the home run to nine, to, to nine, he, he's a fly ball pitcher. He does give up a lot of home runs. And so this is where we see that XFIP a little bit higher than the fielding independent pitching elite level stuff here. The batting average on balls in play, it's low, 236. All right. So we'd expect that to perhaps run. All right. We don't expect anything. Justin Verlander will do what he needs, what he does because he's a Hall of Famer. All right. So <laughs> he defies expectations here. But just based on the numbers, uh, if you're looking at a batting average on balls and play, a left on base percentage, um, a touch over league average, you could expect some regression to the upside. But again, he's he's uh, he's JV and deal. He'll do what he wants and the, the numbers be darned. So <laughs> um, again, on, on, under the hood, just a little bit here. Um, expect that to, he's probably not finishing with a sub two ERA. But it's going to be a pretty, uh, pretty incredible uh, Cy Young-ish type season for him. All right, Julio Urias mixes his name on this list every year, and it doesn't matter because he just he continues to to outperform uh, whatever the numbers are. <laughs> quite, uh, quite a, quite a talent here. Two eight, two eighty nine ERA, fielding independent pitching near four. And he's probably not finishing there. <laughs> he just never does. Uh, ERA minus FIP. So nearly over, just over a one, uh, one run differential between that ERA and, and, and how he's pitching the ex FIP 382 because he gives up, uh, quite a few dingers actually here. So, um, if he, uh, if he able, if he's able to regress a little bit, then 
We can see this XFIP actually drop just a little bit here, but borderline elite level stuff, batting average on balls in play. Um, slightly, slightly lucky. So again, we're not talking about a guy that's pitching a sub two ERA or anything like that, uh, versus a four ERA. I mean, he's, he's, he's barely sub three here, which is still really nice. Um, uh, but that fielding independent pitching against a little bit rise, a little bit, a little bit higher here. So that Babbitt, a touch low, getting a little bit lucky. Your left on base, just fine within league average. Could see some regression as he's outperforming those metrics just a bit here. Again, if he continues to uh, to give up home runs at that clip, then uh, then you then you could see it rise more towards that expected uh, fielding independent pitching here. So uh, getting a touch lucky, but the guy just does this year in and year out. So I'm not so sure that uh, we're going to see a ton of that regression out of him. Alec Manoa. Having an incredible first half here. Um, player that I like quite a bit, but um, I may may hold off on his stuff in the second half here. Or start looking harder as uh, maybe gets touched up a little bit in the second half. He's got 228 ERA, which is incredible, but that FIP 334, so a little over a one run differential. And an XFIP of 388. Again, that home run to home run per nine rate, just a little touch south of the league average here and that's where we could see some uh rise towards that 388 level here batting average on balls in play 244 so a uh, touch lucky nothing nothing crazy here and a left on base percentage of about 81 percent of guys that get on base stay there so nothing is wildly out of control here and if he rose towards that you know so even if he pitched at a 330 level or whatever in the back half of the season here, I mean, he's baked this for the first half. He could finish with a sub-3 ERA, which is kind of what I'm looking for here. So even with some regression, it's going to be a pretty terrific season for Alec Manoa as, uh, as he uh, as he you know, likely puts in a sub-3 ERA for the uh, for the season as a whole. But with some regression, perhaps in the second half, that may be, uh, may be a, a better opportunity to look at some of his stuff, although I haven't really looked at the prices a whole lot here. So, all right, Tristan McKenzie, 320 ERA. He's peeled, pitching at a 422 level. FIP is kind of in the, uh, in the same range. It was one run differential. Uh, giving up nearly one and a half home runs per nine innings. Pitch, strikeout to walk rate in that very, very good area here. Batting average on ball and play, and this is where we see the regression coming in, where the where the numbers say, you know what, you're due for a rise. Uh, 222 batting average on ball and play, and that's very, very fortunate. Again, that's Justin Verlander type stuff. I'm not sure Tristan McKenzie yet has the skills as uh, as just that Justin Verlander has, and so we may see uh, we may see that uh, that number rise just a little bit here. So from a 320 ERA. He climbs towards that four for the back half of the season. Again, he's going to come in well under that number because he's banked so much. But again, that's something to uh, to look out for just a, a little bit here. Left on base percentage, a little higher than the league average, getting just a little bit lucky. Again, that all adds into why that uh, fielding independent pitching and the, and the XFIP are a bit higher than his current ERA. And we could expect some regression here. So I think I had uh, one more here, and I did not. There are a few other players, but it was kind of the same story. So I just wanted to get a feel for how to look at pitchers under the hood just a little bit. Um, you know, Shane Bieber is kind of the same as Tristan McKenzie. So there's a lot of guys out there that are just a little bit off from their metrics. It's very rare to find somebody p performing perfectly to their uh, to their internals. So, uh, But yeah, so I thought it would be uh, just fun to look at that. Well, we've got a few days off from uh, actual baseball here. And uh, we'll do some uh, some hitter action before the uh, the real games start up again. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.